A very good afternoon. I'm Dr. Gitanshu, convener for the Institution Innovation Council, Tirthankar Mahavir University, Muradabad. I extend a warm welcome to our eminent panelists from academia and industry for a panel discussion on Atmanirbhar Bharat, vocal for local, make in India for the world. I also welcome our guest audience and participants for their eminent presence. I look forward to some very insightful deliberations with relevance to making India a self-reliant nation. I take this pleasure in introducing our panelists. We have with us our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Professor Raghuveer Singh, who is a I'm profound sure. amalgamation of being an academician and administrator. We are fortunate to have with us another distinguished speaker, Professor V.K. Singh, who is the head and Dean, Faculty of Management Studies and Coordinator, EAIC, IPR Cell at Gurukul Kangvi. Sir has a teaching experience of 24 years and seven years in Indian Air Force. He has 75 articles to his credit. His areas of interest include international marketing, event management, advertising, and soft skill pitching. We also have a very eminent panelist from the industry, Mr. Vishwas Gautam, who is the brand head for the MIT group of institutions. He has a postgraduate diploma in mass communication and journalism. He has worked with top brands like Times of India, Hindustan Times, Jagran Coffee Books. He has conceptualized and initiated the merger of cross function such as PR, advertising, marketing, sales and branch, uh, branding. I take great pride in introducing our next panelist, Professor Manjula Jain, who is Associate Dean Academics, Tirthankar Mahavir University, and also the President of the IIC of TMU. I take this pleasure in introducing another versatile speaker on the forum, Dr. Aditya Sharma, who is a young, energetic, and dynamic registrar of TMU. I now invite our President of IIC TMU, Dr. Manjula Jain, to commence this session by her opening remarks. Thank you, Thank you. I hope I am audible to everyone. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of uh, IAC TMU, I extend a very warm welcome and my sincere gratitude to all the eminent panelists as Vice Chancellor, distinguished and eminent speaker, registrar, and all other distinct Atmanirbhar Bharat, vocal for local. I think. Ma'am, your voice is uh, breaking now. It's not coming. I apologize for the glitch uh, and some technical issues were there. So uh, I'm reconnected now. So today's panel discussion on Atma Nirbhar Bharat, vocal for local, seems to be very pertinent in the current scenario. The concept was coined by our, our uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi ji, with a motive to address the basic idea of abysmally low market demand and economic slowdown. Indeed, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a disguised blessing to all of us in terms of providing us those sorts of initiatives and encouragement in making India an Atmanirbhar Bharat. This, perf this uh, panel discussion is a perfect forum for all of us to discuss the role of academia in moving Bhar India towards the Atmanirbhar Bharat and how we can make ourselves self-reliant and self-sufficient to envision this dream. I would focus on 
the role of academic institutions and how they can play a vital role in moving towards this initiative and making india a self reliant nation as we all know that uh, we have been uh, dealing with uh, uh, the academic uh, issues that were related with uh, the issues that were not faced before covid 19 but during covid 19 we were faced with so many of issues that have given rise to technological developments and those are skills which are required to be inculcated in our students in order to meet the challenges earlier we were ma uh, making our students learn those skills which were required by the larger companies but nowadays we need to focus on something that india is not having currently as a need but these jobs will certainly be the need of the hour in the future we need to focus our emphasis on more towards msme one of the key drivers of the indian economy as well as the economies of the south asian countries be it singapore korea or japan wherein it constitutes around 80% of the workforce of indian economy and industry ignoring this sector might would be uh, seen as a lost opportunity and we have to build upon this opportunity and we have to see that how we can have a partnership model with these industries in order to make experiential learning as our forte students need to be trained for those jobs that do not exist now but they will be required for as a demand in the future and we all know that around 20 million indians they enter this workforce and not every one of them are adequately equipped for that workplace and we as academia and academic leaders have to make our youth vibrant enough to understand the challenges of this industry and how we can make ourselves atmanirbhar so without taking much of your time i would rather conclude that academic institutions we need to create a workforce that is innovative aware of the ground realities of the industry and the nation and we are ready to face the future also so combining the two forces of industry and academia we could bring about the change in the mindset as well as the expertise required for the nation to achieve atmanirbharta so with this i take this honor to invite our eminent panelist to please share their ideas on how we can inculcate those skills and empower our young and budding entrepreneurs that they can contribute towards making india a self reliant nation i now invite our most eminent and most honorable uh, vice chancellor sir professor raghuveer singh to please share his valuable insights on this forum sir please thank you thank you thank you so much dr manjula and good afternoon everyone <clears throat> Uh, let me on the outset congratulate uh, the whole team for you know deciding to have this topic atmanirbhar bharat as a as a very relevant important uh, uh, area to discuss about uh, some of us especially doubting thomases might say am i audible uh my uh, might say that uh, uh, th th these are some of those slogans uh, and uh, this would probably remain as a slogan i have my own views on it <clears throat> so when you go back to about uh, 50 to 60 years back we had similar slogans by our political leaders in the past called green revolution and uh, white revolution and uh, you understand it so well what was the importance and results of those slogans called uh, green revolution and white revolution india in 60s depended on uh, uh, you know gratitudes offered by america in, in in the form of wheat and today we are the surplus producer so is the case with milk so slogans like this by political leaders of the nation can create 
the wholesome change in the mindset of the people and as well the infrastructure which is required to achieve all these objectives. <clears throat> Such slogans provides us direction or the destination, or we call it a strategic direction for the nation. It in fact motivates, pumps in a lot of energy, and it, it gives a feeling of pride, gives you a lot of self-confidence and desire to achieve. And this is what is most important parameter in achieving anything which appears to be uh, difficult, impossible, or, uh, you know, at times, uh, in, you know, at times it, it may be insurmountable as well. <clears throat> the political leadership decides the destiny of nations or a future position of a nation. The way they speak and on what they speak matters quite a lot down the line. It prepares citizens both psychologically and physically for the challenges ahead for the nation. It basically tests the metal of the nation and therefore such slogans and such visioning statements become very, very effective since it channelizes the energy and focus of the youth and as well as the citizens of the country. Now, this uh, Atmanirbha Bharat slogan uh, was coined and propagated a few months back. And today you could see large number of us are in fact talking about it, its relevance, its importance, and how do we in fact make it happen. <clears throat> Whether it will be successful or not will be determined what resources, time, and efforts are put by all of us. We, we would be watching our political leadership. The entire citizens of this nation would be watching our political leadership and people down below. What in fact are they doing about the slogans which they have given to the nation? You know. It's not just the words uh, which would be watched. It is the actions of such people will be watched and based upon those actions, actions in the terms of, you know, both investment and efforts and time put for this particular slogan would be the watchword for the citizens in the future. Uh, in my mind, Atmanirbha Bharat is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. No, the sprint uh, of few months is not going to take us anywhere. So we all go to be the marathon runners. And let me be, you know, very factual about it. We all go to travel a long, long distance before we could say that, hey, we have arrived. Today, if we look at uh, India vis-a-vis -vis the global perspective, see, Today, we almost import 70% of our defense requirements, you know, in terms of weapons. And we, we, I don't know whether we should call ourselves proud to say that we are the largest buyers or importers of weapons in the world. So I don't know whether to take a pride or, or to feel it the other way around. And it's also, we import 80% of our petroleum products or petroleum needs to run our industry, to run our transportation and energy requirements. Though we are one of the largest manufacturer of you know, pharmaceutical products in the world, and we almost manufacture 50% of vaccinations in the globe. But the harsh reality is that 70% of API, that is active pharmaceutical in ingredients, are imported from China. Whereas few years back, India was a net exporter of these very ingredients for pharmaceuticals. So why have we fallen behind? Why we need to buy so much from uh, uh, China? We all go to look inwards and find answers within ourselves nowhere else. 
other important items which in fact uh, contributes quite a lot to our industrial production are electrical machinery, electronic components, not electronic uh, items, but electronic components, organic chemicals, vegetable oils, all these are imported from across the globe. And there are reasons why they are being imported. You know, when you, when you talk about Atmanirbhar Bharat, there are two most important things in my mind would be the cost and the quality will determine whether we will be able to sustain Atmanirbhar Bharat slogan or we would give it away in a, you know, after short and insincere efforts. So the cost and quality becomes most important. So whatever I spoke about APIs or other electrical machineries, it's not that we don't manufacture, we do, but our costs are much higher than, because you all understand, today we operate in a very open business society. You know, it, it is thoroughly globalized. There are no restrictions. Therefore, we would any uh, uh, you know business person would like to buy the cheapest from across the globe. So unless we make quality products and at a competitive pricing, we will not be able to sustain Atma Bharat. Yeah, there are some very prominent projects in the past which have in fact succeeded quite a lot, and one of them I. I have in my mind is a, a integrated missile program launched way back in 1982 by Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Today, I can proudly say that we are self-sufficient, self-dependent, self-reliant on missile technology. Whether it is surface-to-surface, uh, -surface, whether it is these are ballistic missiles or cruise missiles, whether they are from air to air, air to surface, surface to air, underwater to the air or underwater to the surface, whatever you name it, I think we have nailed this particular technology. And to, I'm proud to announce that, or I'm proud to share with you that we are the most economical producers of this lot of uh, of weapons in the world. And today, uh, the various buyers from across the globe are looking forward to India's uh, uh, weapons of this nature. So if we could be so great uh, in uh, uh, you know this technology, why can't we be able to do other things? There is no reason why we will not be able to uh, do, but there are, you know, uh, at times has, we, we are surprised that why we could do something which appeared impossible to us and why couldn't we do it, something which uh, appeared to be simpler, say a contrasting example of uh, uh, our, you know, um, Gagan. Contrasting example, we have been able to s set uh, cheapest uh, uh, satellites. That means uh, we have a system whereby we we can uh, establish satellites uh, in the space with the least cost in the world. But we are not able to manufacture a world-class fighter plane. I mean, that's a little uh, uh, quite contrasting. Uh, ISRO has been able to do one of the finest job in the Global, you could in the world. Or, but over a period of time, uh, we weren't, weren't able to, uh, uh, you know, manufacture a, a good um, fighter plane. Though we do have a Tejas, but Tejas has to catch up a lot with the uh, real global standard fighters. There are reasons why. There are many, many issues. Unless those issues are taken care. Uh, it will be very difficult to achieve the objectives of Atma Bharat. Some of those things which comes to my mind uh, are, you know, when you look at number of patents vis-a-vis -vis other nations, we stand way behind, way, way behind other nations globally in terms of sheer number of patents. Our research spending 
for last many, many years has not even been to 1% of GDP. Compared to, you know, nations like Korea and others, they, they talk about 4%. Even the countries like US, they talk about 3 plus percentage of their GDP put into the research. And uh, research in universities has been more focused on basic and fundamental research than the applied research, uh, which is not the case in Western world, where universities are involved uh, almost in every project where applied uh, research happens. Similarly, uh, you know, another major area where we lack is private participation in research as well as in high-end technologies. It is a recent phenomena where some of our private players have entered into uh, a defense manufacturing or supplying to ISRO or many other important, uh, you know, uh, technological advancements in the country. Private participation has not been there. Therefore, the output coming from so-called government uh, research organizations has been at a snail's pace. Okay. A role of uh, business in research has to expand quite a lot. Our business does not spend uh, uh, in any uh, you know, investment on uh, uh, research. For example, if you look around globally, we, we call ourselves, we are one of the greatest in the world of, of uh, information technology, IT. But I'm sorry to say that we don't have a single global brand in IT. So if we are greatest, then why couldn't we be able to build? There are issues, definitely. So in my mind, let's involve our universities more into not only just a basic uh, research, and uh, the phenomenal research, but into applied research. Let's, you know, the government and uh, especially when I, I, I recall uh, how Dr. Manjula has talked about role of education in research. I think we'll have to get away from these number games of publications and patents. They, they are driving us mad. They, all this is not actually contributing to the real thing. You know, the real research which can be of any use to the society. The number games, whoever has uh, brought in this idea might have had a different idea, but it has not resulted into what one's expectations are. We have to relook at this number games, sheer number games, because numbers don't contribute to the Atma Nirbhra. What will contribute is the quality of research which happens not just the numbers. And the government has to relook at things like the manufacturing environment. The, the, the cost of manufacturing in India has to really come down. Not many innovations have happened in the manufacturing sector. And we as an educationist would do a great, great job uh, to Admiru Bharat if we can change the way we, in fact, deliver our education, or if we can change the way we look at education. If we start looking at education uh, and dealing it with the degrees, we would have a different mindset and start producing uh, the future generations, which would help us you know, to contribute immensely to Atmanirbhar Bharat. Jai Hind. Namaskar, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your insight on a self-reliant India. Uh, wow. Now I invite uh, Professor V.K. Singh to shed light and give us an insight on self-reliant India. Thank you. Uh, can I know my uh, limitation of time, please? About 10 minutes or so. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Honorable uh, and uh, honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, TMO, Professor Singh, the convener of uh, today's program, Professor Jain, 
and very beautifully handled picture uh and geetanjali if i'm not wrong what was her name i did not can be collecting it and uh, there would be managers of uh, tnu a very good evening to everyone uh at the outset i'm very much thankful to the university that has been provided me with this soft platform to share my few ideas well uh, i'll be just taking 10 to 12 minutes and my discussion would be pinning to reasons to start the atmanirbhar bharat and then five pillars of uh, atmanirbhar bharat and then i'll be talking about the slogans and then five phases of uh, atmanirbhar bharat and packages what they have given in terms of three different uh, ventures impact of uh, the stimulus packages and ultimately steps to be taken so well when we talk of uh, looking to atmanirbhar bharat uh, let us be very clear that this was uh, a covid uh, pandemic uh, initiations during this covid this thing this term was evolved in fact and uh, better if we look onto it as especially designed for uh, those migrant uh, work workers uh, who lost their job during this interval uh, it was a uh, corona which uh, badly affected not only our economy but also you know the entire world so keeping in our regards government took a very major steps uh, you know to start with uh, promoting people for their own startups well uh, if you look onto the many reasons behind starting this schemes uh, or starting this very uh, programs the very first reason is you know the covid 19 it is an epidemic and the entire world has faced a huge trouble and it is believe uh, that it is you know uh, the china uh, let us uh, be very clear on this uh, who was behind this show and ultimately lot many things are uh, lot many stories are also coming up on that and some other reasons uh, against the covid-19 virus uh, maybe you know the industries were running in loss and as a result many uh, you know they have lost their jobs and shockingly many family they were on the you know on, on road labels were you know moved from their own uh, parents uh, point to the landed point where they wanted to go so this all happened and uh, factually speaking when you look on to uh, the basic junctures we'll find it that's that some sectors like fdi limits has also been increased uh, so that uh, you know the foreign direct investments for the infrastructures development in india was uh, initiated uh, so we are proudly to say that uh, for uh, this uh, all phases of the government in india has announced overall packages which roughly comes to 20 lakh uh, crore rupees which is almost equivalent to uh, 10% of our, our gdp of india Uh, well looking to the second instances about the five pillars of atmanirbhar bharat which was focusing to the economy uh, which uh, you know is not only just incremental changes but a very quantum jump was uh, looked to it uh, the infrastructure that uh, become you know very modern during india's the simple what we talk about uh, the system uh, will be a technological driven and not based on the policies in the past century what we were looking forward for Uh, demographic that is our strength uh, will secure as a source of energy for a self reliant uh, you know india and last but not the least was uh, india's demand uh, and supply that cycled uh, during the improvement of the economy and gave it uh, the ability to achieve its uh, full potential now uh, when you uh, phrases the different uh, categories of uh, atmanirbhar bharat so basically it was uh, pinned to the five different phases uh, taking from the business that includes msmes uh, taking from the second phase was uh, poor you know including uh, migrants and farmers which was coined for uh, third phase was focused to uh, agriculture uh, pure agriculture and uh, fourth phase was again uh, you know uh, focused the new horizons of the growth uh, for a country Uh, like developing country like us or second world uh, third world like us and last but not least again to the phases was uh, government reforms and enablers that was initiated so overall if you if you look to the uh, entire uh, juncture you'll find one thing it's very common was uh, that under the atmanirbhar bharat you know abhiyan uh, yojana or you can sort of compensation and benefits plans uh, uh, you know was uh, more uh, looked forward for Uh, to get uh, the government uh, or in terms of implementing all other types of schemes uh, that uh, our india uh, really initiated for 
uh, well uh, the atmanirbhar bharat uh, movement uh, got its boost uh, you know more uh, from a native businessman and industrialist and the big financial uh, foreign investment uh, in india companies uh, especially i'm focusing to jio uh, of airlines uh, uh, from google and facebook there many many things they jumped into it so the situation on the borders and the lockdown had uh, people and the government uh, to you know go for vocal for local strategy and the people are willing to pay uh, extra to encourage our local uh, producers producers and manufacturers and i can uh, take a very good example especially in haridwar during this uh, uh, pandemic and especially when a lot of uh, festivities were there especially the diwali i could see easily that people were not preferring to have any products which was uh, you know uh, not from india so they basically they were focusing to some parameters uh, some some approaches and it was a very lame approach that discussed upon uh, when looking forward for the 5g network dreams uh, of india will uh, now be made you know uh, true by jio and india will soon be into the world's market of technology uh, that 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 can be uh, looked forward for and one thing more which uh, i could uh, really uh, resist on um, i'm proud to be Uh, i'm proud of my country is about uh, the ppe kits and manufacturers and exporting that have reached uh, new heights uh, and uh, now the second most exporting nation in the world now this was uh, something now uh, come to the fourth point when we talk of uh, our the slogans uh, for which was initiated during the atmanirbhar bharat like for example local for local local for global and uh, make for a world these all slogans uh, you know was was really Uh, creating a lot of uh, good extensions uh, for uh, local for global uh, that local products in india should have a global appeal and reach uh, that concludes to uh, make certain uh, phenomenal advantages uh, especially i'm talking about the atmanirbhar bharat uh, you know has been called uh, by so some of the repackage version of uh, making uh, india movement using new uh, tag taglines such as uh, vocal for local see uh some of uh, uh, i could uh, see it uh, you know uh, like for example uh, sale uh, for steel production iits for domestic engineers uh, aims for medical doctors uh, drdo for uh, defense research and uh, gale uh, you know in the area of energy criticizing the advertising tactics and some rephases uh, entered is uh, you know end for yourself is campaign so that that all things says you know clubbed up and if you look onto the indian express article of 23rd september 2020 uh, which i quote uh, is about uh, unfinishing reforms in atmanirbhar bharat agenda includes uh, civil services reform the steel frame has become a steel cage uh, government reform in delhi does not need 57 ministers and 250 people uh, you know with the secretary rank and then financial reform you know looking for sustainable to raising credit uh, to gdp uh, ratio from 50 to 100% and especially uh, according to urban reform uh, talking about uh, 100% 100 cities which has been uh, more than million people rather than 52 uh, uh, cross uh, limitations that had come for and again to the skill reforms uh, where our apprentices apprentices regulations and hold back employers are and universities have taken a lot of uh, pain to come up and uh, you know to redesign this and uh, again uh, the last was a labor reform uh, our capital is handicapped without labor and labor is handicapped without capital so that was uh, something which uh, we initiated for it and then when you look at the packages uh, three atmanirbhar uh, packages talking of uh, i remember 12th may 2020 prime minister announced an overall economic package of 20 lakh crore which was roughly to uh, 280 billion dollars of head states and then on 12th october 2020 again the government posted of its 73000 crore of package which was 10 billion dollar and then 12th november again the next third phase was about uh, the government announced 2.65 uh, lakh uh, you know crore uh, which was uh, roughly 36 point some point of uh, stimulus packages that labeled to Uh, you know aatm nirbhar bharat abhiyan uh, 3.0 so that was now question is uh, what are the impacts uh, of this stimulus packages so when you look on to the impacts impacts of the stimulus package uh, we can broadly classify into primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector and in the primary sector we talk of reforms to amend was eca apmc contract uh, farming 
you know and to, to the secondary uh, sector we call it upon uh, giving to msmes for indian economy uh, right is uh, from 3 lakhs crore you know collateral uh, free loan facility to msmes under the packages and again looking to the territorial sector the government has adopted a balanced approach in addressing uh, you know concerned sectors for example uh, newly uh, launched a pm e vidya program uh, for multi mode access to digital online education provides a uniform uh, you know learning uh, platform for the whole nation uh, public expenditure on health uh, will uh, definitely increase uh, the investment to a grassroots health uh, institutions so that was all uh, things which has uh, clubbed on but parallel to it uh, some associations had also mugged up and a uh, lot many uh, things moved upon that what are the steps to be taken to enhance and to club and to bubble all those initiatives so the very first step uh, which uh, which which i i could smell it is about you know enhancing demand because the economy package of the country emerge out uh, to the lockdown it requires a stimulus enhancement demand across the economy uh, well the best way of this is to spend in a greenfield infrastructure uh second thing i would uh, suggest is about the mobilizing finances and when we try to go for mobilizing of finances we look for the rest uh, you know then let the people should come from the privatization you know taxation loans and more of a internal you know inter- in international aids that we talk about uh, holistic reforms also plays a very important role in you know stimulus packages that fails to reflect the uh, trickle down effect under the you know reforms to various uh, categories thus uh, you know when we talk of atmanirbhar also encompasses the unfinishing agenda of holistic reforms which includes uh, reforms uh, like uh, civil services education uh, skills and labor uh, which clubly uh, uh, defined to the task so uh, when you look at the tasks uh, now for the government uh, is to you know reality check Uh, is by setting up the sector specific pillars specifically uh, task force for atmanirbhar bharat and see uh, if a program should really bring uh, benefits to them uh, being a, only a buzzword uh, so experts believe that uh, self sufficiency will take a couple of years and billions and billions of dollars of investment to will complete uh, the you know con- uh, consent and the positive institutions of the government so this government is uh, of course a pro reform and as a citizen of one should uh, make sure that uh, we 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 enhance that this sustainability this categorizations should uh, you know reflect very positively uh, and and at last uh, i am proud uh, to conclude uh, that uh, uh, you know this uh, is a bold step of our honorable prime minister and government of india uh, will definitely make uh, india self reliant and uh, this moment will record and return as a golden word in the history of india and we will definitely able to sing proudly again jahan dal dal par sone ki churiya karti hai basera wo bharat desh hai mera uh, thank you very much for a very patient hearing thank you very much uh thank you sir for sharing uh, your wonderful deliberation on atmanirbhar bharat uh now we have with us uh, a specialist from the industry mr vishwas gautam who would enlighten us with the role of industry in self reliance thank you very much uh am i audible yes you are audible uh, i'm extremely sorry i'm not feeling well today but it was the insistence of uh, mr tavra that you know and and the topic itself that kind of pushed me out of the bed also to participate uh, my heartiest congratulations and thank you to the vc sir you know he was so inspiring and you know it gave me a little confidence that i could speak my mind uh, you know that he was so blatant and and uh, absolute honest that it gave me confidence that you know this is the platform that where i can speak my mind uh, although with all due respect to uh, my colleague who was speaking before me dr singh for a moment i thought i was in a press conference so <laughs> so uh, i i i was just like you know i thought it's a press conference it's not a webinar it's like it's it's, it's looking like a press conference uh, but coming back to the topic today uh, you know honorable vc sir mentioned two very pertinent points you know before i come back come back to the uh, atmanirbhar bharat and and what i want to speak about 
he talked about that 75 years i think almost of of independence and we being still the second largest importer of armed products defense products you know second largest uh, after saudi arabia which is is kind of a shame second the point i want to make today is that we have not been able to develop an assault rifle for our indian army we still don't have an assault rifle of our own we are still importing radar system uh, artillery uh, fighter jet play fighter jets uh, so much so missiles as well the second point he touched upon was uh, the education sector and the role of education sector in in atmanirbhar bharat uh, to his point of view i would like to add one aspect here which is the sociological factor that comes across when we talk of when we talk of atmanirbhar bharat now you must all have heard about a very famous joke you know about sharma ji ka ladka you know there is a joke that that goes around like that sharma ji ka ladka iit mein chala gaya sharma ji ka ladka iim mein chala gaya i am i am myself sharma ji ka ladka so sociologically we are like groomed it's like ingrained into our system that as soon as we like get into education system you have to get you have to have to get into a government job you have to become a bank you have to join a bank you have to become an ice officer and that is the only way you will be considered as a successful person in our society this is one sociological impact which which is the uh, i think uh, the highest deterrent when it comes to moving towards atmanirbhar bharat because we have been ingrained we have been in a condition like that we are only you know studying to go and serve you know to do a job the second sociological consideration is that we do not have faith in our own products dr singh mentioned about vocal for lo- lo- vocal for local you know i must enlighten him with the fact that 3.7 trillion and i'm talking about 3.7 trillion is the number of import the amount of import of electronic products that we have currently which means 3.7 trillion we are spending on an apple or a samsung or a x or a y or a z but we do not have a trust on a micromax or a indian based technological product you know this is the other sociological we flaunt an apple we flaunt a samsung but as soon as there is an indian product that needs a backing as soon as there is indian technological product that needs a backing we we feel ashamed you know we we like feel like if i'm carrying a micro max it's like oh my god he's, he he is he's carrying a micro max you know and whether i have, I have i12 this is second sociological impact the third uh, aspect that uh, uh, honorable vc sir very very pertinently mentioned was the r&d now let me give you another fact uh this 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 question is open for everyone can anyone answer me which country has the maximum number of startups in the world anyone in the audience yeah i don't see any answer from the audience so again you know uh, let me just uh, enlighten you with the fact that in num- in the world the maximum number of startups are in tel aviv in israel and it is called the startup capital of the world and israel i am very sure you know people are aware how how small it is compared to uh, you know the geographical and the demographical size of our country now how many universities or institutions of our country are ranked among the top 100 uh, in the world anyone hardly any which are the top 5 countries in the world who invest most in r&d you know let me tell you number 1 is israel number 2 is sweden then switzerland and china now you know there was a lot of halabu about the fact when 
two individuals said something on a public platform. One I can recall Dr. Manmohan Singh addressing uh, an audience at university. I will won't I won't name the university here, and he was extremely appalled by the fact that it, despite having so much talent, we we as a country are not able to file as number of patents, as number of research papers, as number of journals as compared to any other country. The second famous personality, Dr. Narayan Murthy, came on record and said that you know I'm not going to hire students from IITs because the quality of students from IIT is not at par of the students I want to hire. Now there are a lot of hullabaloo about the fact, but the but, but they were they were talking the fact. They were talking a, a ugly truth which we do not you know kind of face. It's all good. Atmanirbha Bharat is an initiative like you know when we saw the success of Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. It gave us a hope that Atmanirbha Bharat uh, will also inspire Indians and and you know somewhat as I'm I'm not I'm not saying that Swachh Bharat Abhiyan has been completely successful, but yes, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan has given a way and and in a lot of cities, for example, Indore and a lot of cities has has created a model which people can be proud of. That okay, fine, that we have we have been able to you know follow that. But as far as Atmanirbha Bharat uh, is concerned, it's in nascent stages. Uh, as uh, uh, Honorable Vicky said, you know the results will come, and I'm very hopeful about that. But the figures which I have in front of me, the figures that I study, you know, gives me a very grim picture uh, that you know we are very, very far away from the uh, from realizing the dream of of Atmanirbha Bharat. Dr. Singh mentioned very well, you know, the way India, you know, uh, during the COVID, uh, inspired the world, and 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 when it comes came to the production of PPE kit. Again, you know, India set an example when it comes to the vaccine. It is the world's largest vaccination program going on, and I'm very proud as an Indian that you know we are we are we are doing it. But finally, it comes down to the fact that uh, the world's economy runs on the two major products, which is one is defense, and the other is the electronic products. And where we are far, far, far behind, then then you know we we have not been able. To, and and the most in, the most surprising feature is that we we as the Indians go and work in Apple, we go and work in Google, we go and work in Samsung, so much so that we are we Indians are driving these companies. We are coming with with innovations. We are the ones who are developing it. But as as a country, we are not able to produce a brand that the world can take take up take up and take a look and say, okay, fine, this product is Indian and we must buy. There is no line to buy that product. The only one product that that world has taken note out uh, of our history is Maruti as, as a car, which we should be proud of. Uh, now, where someone like T, where an institution like TMU and the and the esteemed faculty members of TMU uh, can you know come into picture, it is the first point that I touched upon the sociological impact of. Grooming the kids to not be a job seeker, then to be become a job giver. Here is is where the role of honourable VC sir and the faculty member of TMU comes into picture. Wherein we have to tell them that it's okay to dream, it's okay to follow your dream, it's okay to you know start your company. Because this this is a very recent example. A kid uh, it started. A company called Bevakuf.com, and and with the name of it only, you know, it was like Bevakuf.com, and people must have laughed over him. That you know, what is it? You know, he has gone, he has gone crazy. And Bevakuf.com this year has broken all records. So it's 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 the it's the role of of our esteemed faculty member here becomes so much important because we are here to handhold them and give them. You know the the courage and and the backing that okay you know you have a dream we have the resources we have the talent and we'll handhold you you dream and we'll give you wings. The second thing is the sociologically we have to also you know start looking uh, at Indian products and and believe in it and start believing in Indian products and for some time you know. Uh, Give these Indian products the 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 impetus that they require. I I am not one of those naysayers, you know, who who would say that you know I have given up. I I still have high hopes on on 
the future of atam nirbhar bharat but when i see the figure that you know 3.7 trillion uh, of of our money is going in importing electronic products you know it kind of scares me it, it says that you know and if you see uh, after oil uh, and uh, you know the facts after oil and and chemicals it is the third largest import i'm not uh, including defense in it so uh, it's it's scary you know electronic products we, we why can't we product we can't why can't we produce electronic products here now a outside company like amazon comes into our country and gives a run for the money to indian retailers and and we have not been able to give a stiff competition to them okay there are flip there's a flip card but then you know when you, when we compare it to amazon you know uh, it, it, it the, the numbers that they are making there's a huge difference uh my again you know I, i'm sorry this 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 platform is not interactive there is i i, I can't see a lot of people uh, being involved because uh, it would be all the more interesting if people will take part in it uh, you know there's one more thing that you know i want to put uh, your focus upon which is the amount of money government is investing with the atal tinkering labs with the uh, acic uh, foundation and innovation cell it is not that the government is not putting in money the government schools have been given a lot of funds uh, there are atal tinkering labs being made in various various government schools but the problem is the faculty members there the teachers there are not equipped or not trained enough to use or train their students to how to use those equipments how to use those funds again here the role of an institution like tmu comes in wherein a tmu can become a role model in the area and you know take those uh, schools and those other tinkering labs under their wings and you know train the faculty members there we subsequently can train their students recently there was india international science festival that was happened you know it is an it's an annual event and there was a particular segment there uh, which was student engineering model competition and uh, you will be surprised to know that uh, more than 101 uh, innovative models were shortlisted uh, from across the nation 101 innovative models in india international science festival which clearly shows the amount of potential these students have now think about the fact that these models are bagged and invested upon tomorrow who knows that these models can you know turn it into a, a unicorn uh, talking of unicorn worlds uh, us has 67% of the revenue when it comes to Uh, unicorn startups but the number 2 when after us the number 2 has slowly and steadily been taken over by china 27.2% of the profit earned by the unicorn startup is now given to china so slowly quietly steadily china is is rising up and we you know as 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 a nation with all the resources all the brains all the uh, you know uh, intelligence and productivity at our disposal are, are not able to rise up to the occasion uh, you know sports sports give uh, life lessons that uh, you know no feat no other you know aspect can you know and 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 i, I want to bring sports here because i was just watching this brisbane test a uh, few weeks back and mr modi uh, mentioned brisbane test also in one of his his speeches uh, to youngsters few days back uh, i would just point about one one line made by australian coach at the end of the match and the australian coach justin langer went on record and said that never ever ever underestimate the indians and he used ever th- thrice in his sentence never ever 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 underestimate the indians because a country of 1.4 billion people and 11 players representing those 1.4 billion people have to be the toughest so you know it was a compliment not only to indian cricket team but to the spirit of being an indian so uh, 
I'm I'm just quoting this example because we have the we have a T Natarajan or a Abdul Kalam or a Narayan Murthy or a Sundar Pichai or a Satya Nadella or a, you know name any you know we have those leaders hiding in Salem in a Muradabad or in Meerut or a Buland Shaher or in in Lansdowne or in the in the deep Himachal village. all we need to is identify th- that talent put the talent out give that talent the required impetus and you never know that tomorrow that talent will give you something which the entire world will take note of uh one last question you know what was the last invention or the last innovation by an indian that you can think of Which the world took note of. You know, the silence is kind of you know gives me, um, you know, like if people are not interested or people are not liking it. So, but uh, so it's not that we are not liking it. We love hearing you, uh, Mr. Gautam. So uh, I'll uh, just please. like to finish up. But so the fact is that the last major invention and innovation. that the world took note of was by sabir bhatia when he invented hotmail which subsequently was bought by microsoft at a uh, amount which uh, you know was not disclosed i'm i'm sure that you know it must be billions and billions because uh, uh, sabir bhatia after that did nothing so i think he made so much money that he required to do nothing after that so uh, hotmail was one thing which the world took note of and post that i cannot think of an innovation that the world kind of said wow what has happened is that the brain drain the, the the amount of indians for the lack of resources for the lack of you know uh, kind of say uh, backing by by the indian companies just moved away from this country and went to various other countries today germany germany has the largest number of indians in their research program you know a batches and batches are taken from bits pilani and taken to german you know nuclear programs their biotechnology programs sweden has coming up now to india and taking our students our students gone are the days when us was only the place now world is taking note of indian students taking them and investing on them and they are doing research in their respective countries why can't we retain those talent and tmu i i'm, I'm so uh, i'm so hopeful and so very you know uh, you know i i must congratulate the tmu uh, uh, vc sir the tmu staff here that you have all the resources you have all the resources at disposal and and you have the catchment area as well all it is required is that these these kids around your catchment area the faculty in your own institution the students in your own, in your own institution are you know taken out of that rut kind of thinking wherein i have to get a job i have to you know be a, i have to seek a job we have to change our thinking from being a job seeker to becoming a job giver and the moment this sociological difference comes into us and it it, it involves the parents also you know all the sharma ji have to stop thinking about my sharma my beta has to become an ias all the sharma ji have to you know stop thinking about if he is a topper he has to be, he has to go to iit so the sharma ji also have to you know start thinking about my beta is becoming you know a, a entrepreneur and i'm proud of it so and it's not about beta i'm talking beti also i'm being gender neutral here so to the fact remains uh, there's a lot of responsibility on tmu and tmu organizing this webinar kind of you know gives me hope that the institutions are are also rising up to the occasion and they are also taking up the responsibility that yes you know it, we will contribute we will give a part and and i am very sure the next time i am invited in a webinar i'll have at least five or six innovators or entrepreneurs from tmu only who will be speaking in the panel and sharing their success stories all the best uh thank you so much uh, mr gautam on this insight and i think it was a very uh, thoughtful uh, deliberation on the same so uh, due to unavoidable circumstances uh, dr aditya sharma will not be able to join us 
So I would like to thank our distinguished panelists, and I feel uh, that the session was highly exhaustive and very comprehensive in terms of covering all the aspects of self-reliant India and how. Uh, However, this session is open to a question and answer session. So if any questions are there in the audience, please, you can go ahead. Any questions from the audience? So uh, it was indeed a very rigorous and thought provoking panel discussion by our eminent panelists. Uh, this deliberation has surely paved the way for moving towards Atma Nirbharta in a holistic manner. Hope the session was fruitful and motivational for our young and budding entrepreneurs. I extend a heartful thanks to our panelists and audience in making this a success. Thank you very much.